everyone. Thanks for visiting my channel. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Carol and I'm so glad that you stopped by. Please consider subscribing, like and share my videos and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box below. So today I have another cranberry recipe for you. I have had requests for jellied cranberry sauce. I know many of you like the jellied version. So that is what we're going to do today. I have several others on my channel, some that are appropriate for canning, some that are you just make a single batch of it um, and I will link all those in the description box for you and the canning one I'll leave an iCard and uh, a link in the description box as well so you can take a look at those um, I also have another cranberry sauce recipe that I'm gonna be doing for you probably later this week maybe next week but we'll get it in before Thanksgiving because it's gonna be really yummy and we're gonna use it to make an hors d'oeuvre as well as making it cranberry sauce so you have that to look forward to anyway so today we're gonna to be making like I said jelly jellied cranberry sauce now there are a couple of versions of this um, from trusted sources uh, we're gonna be using the one from the ball complete book of home preserving and we're gonna use their method for making it there is one on the National Center for Home Food Preservation, which is also found in So Easy to Preserve. So if you have the So Easy to Preserve book, you can find it in there. Um, this, the one in the ball book, they both, both recipes call for the same ingredients, water, sugar, and cranberries. The one from the National Center of Home Food Preservation and from So Easy to Preserve, they actually strain the cranberries once they're cooked. The one from the ball book just purees the cranberries. And I think that that's gonna give us more of the texture that we're used to from the grocery store. So we're trying to replicate what most people are familiar with that you would get in a can at the grocery store. So I'm gonna go with this version. If you want, if you want to strain it, you can strain it after you cook your berries, which is gonna be our, step, our first step. You could strain it through a fine mesh sieve if you want to do that like i said i'm not going to do that i'm just going to puree the berries they say to use a food mill or a food processor fitted with a metal blade and puree until smooth so that is what we are going to be doing today and like i said we need just a few ingredients cranberries water and sugar their tip is you can use fresh or frozen cranberries, but if you are using frozen, be sure to partially thaw the berries in the refrigerator before getting started. As far as sugar is concerned, I know many of you have concerns with sugar. I'm constantly asked, can I use an artificial sweetener or a sweetener of, of another kind? Um, or can I reduce the amount of sugar? Cranberries are very tart. By nature so if you want to try reducing the sugar a little bit in this you can I don't think I would reduce it by much that's just my opinion I wouldn't reduce it at all if it was me uh, but if you want to try reducing it a little bit for this recipe you could certainly try that the only um, sweetener that's recommended for canning that holds up to the um, heat process of canning is sucralose or Splenda that's what's recommended at this Point in time um, so you could try that if you need to use um, another sweetener for health reasons as far as honey or agave or any other sweetener like that I don't really know you can use those and I will leave a link to um, using sugar substitutes in canning so you can read all about that for yourself I've not tested it in this recipe so at this point I wouldn't try it so we're gonna be going by the recipe we're gonna use the recommended amount of sugar I will leave you links so that you can make your own decisions about reducing the sugar if you choose to do so. So without further ado, we're going to get started. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention, like I said, we're just using cranberries, water, and sugar. However, they do suggest that if you would like to make add a little bit of spice to it, you can make a spice bag out of a square piece of cheesecloth and add broken cinnamon stick and some whole cloves to it and then you would just let that simmer with your cranberries then obviously you'd remove it before you pureed them the thing that i'm going to do because i love orange and cranberry together i'm going to substitute some orange juice for some of my water so i'm going to be using the recipe calls for a cup and three quarters of water i'm going to be using one cup of water and three quarters of a cup of orange juice to give me that orange flavor in the background um, but you can use all water the other thing that I like to do, and if you've hung around my channel very much, you know that I love to do this for the holidays. I'm gonna add a splash of Grand Marnier. Adds 
delicious flavor to special dishes such as we're making here cranberry sauce so um, I'm gonna be using just a splash of it about a tablespoon or so totally optional but very delicious and you could use any orange flavored liqueur that you want to actually you could use any liqueur that you want to however you want to jazz it up for your own little twist that would be great as well so you want to start with clean cranberries I've washed them rinsed them and drained them and set them aside we need four and a quarter cups of whole cranberries um, washed and drained so I'm gonna bring you in close and we're gonna get started okay I have my four and a quarter cups of cranberries in my saucepan to that I'm gonna add one and three quarters cup of liquid like I said I'm doing one cup of water three quarters of a cup of orange juice but you could use all water if you prefer we're gonna turn on our heat to a medium high heat and we're gonna bring this up to a boil and we're gonna gently boil our cranberries until they burst open it should be about five to ten minutes Okay guys, we have a nice gentle uh, boil going on here. You can hear the you can hear the cranberries starting to pop. We want all of them to pop open and uh, start to break down a little bit. So just keep an eye on it. It's going to take about 10 minutes for that to happen. And then once all of our cranberries have popped open, we are going to turn it the heat off and let our cranberries sit for about five minutes and then we're going to puree them. Um, Ball does recommend using a food mill or a food processor. You could also use a blender to do your pureeing for you. Okay, so I cooked my berries for almost 10 minutes. It's going to be between 5 and 10 minutes that they start to all of them pop open. You can also, once they start popping open, you can also take the back of your spoon and push them up against the side and that will speed up the process a little bit uh, but I just boiled them gently now balls instructions are to puree them and like I said you could also use a blender for this you can use a food processor like I'm going to use or you can use a food mill they recommend doing it in batches so that's what we're going to do here so I'm going to add about half put my lid on anytime you're pureeing something hot I did let my cranberries sit for about five minutes to let them cool a little bit anytime you're pureeing something hot it's always a good idea to have a towel um, across the top of your blender or your food processor Okay, once you have pureed your berries so that they are nice and smooth, and in light of full disclosure, I did start with my food processor. I don't know why I keep trying to use my food processor. My blender works much better for pureeing things. Even when we made the mustard, my uh, blender did a better job. So the blender, food processor, food mill, however you wanna do it is totally fine, but I got my berries really nice and smooth. So what we wanna do now over medium heat is we want to add two cups of sugar, and yes, it is a lot of sugar, but cranberries are very tart. So like I said earlier, you, you can make your own choices about sugar here, but I think that they need it and it is a holiday after all. So we're gonna treat ourselves a little bit. So now what we wanna do is we want to dissolve the sugar over medium heat. Once your sugar is dissolved, we're gonna bring this up to a hard boil and we are going to let it boil hard until it reaches the gel stage. Now I'm going to use a thermometer and I'm going to bring my mixture up to 220 degrees, which is the temperature for jelly for my altitude I'm less than a thousand feet if you are at a different altitude I will leave um, the appropriate temperature for you in the description box below so take a look at that table you can also do a sheet test and you can also do the refrigerator test for gelling I will leave links on how to do those for you in the description box for me the most foolproof way to do it is using a thermometer so I'm gonna be using a thermometer um, so I'm just gonna clip it onto the side of my pan and bring everything up to 220 degrees. Okay guys, we are at a nice hard boil. This is what you're looking for, and look at that gorgeous color. Um, so we are looking for, like I said, 220 degrees for my altitude. Once we get there, we are all set for canning. I'll remove it from the heat and then stir in a tablespoon or two of my orange flavored liqueur, and then we can get busy canning. Okay guys, we are all set for canning. Modern canning guidelines state that if you're processing for 10 minutes or more, you don't need to pre-sterilize your jars or your lids. So I've just washed my jars, I'm keeping them hot in my canner I wash my lids and set them aside so we are ready to go um, it did take me 
a while to get to the 220 degrees. And like I said, I will also leave instructions on how to check with the sheet test and uh, the refrigerator or the freezer test. So we are all set to go. Ball says that we should get about four half pint jars or two pints out of this. It cooked down quite a bit, so we will see. So make sure you start with two hot jars. We are going to be filling them to a quarter of an inch headspace. So once you get to your quarter of an inch headspace, you're gonna use your debubbling tool, chopstick, or plastic butter knife to release any air bubbles. So just poke around your jar. I did, if I failed to mention, I did add a tablespoon of liqueur uh, once it stopped cooking. Then you wanna take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean your rims, you wanna make sure there's nothing interfering with a good seal. And you're going to center your lids. And add your bands to fingertip tight. Okay, so Ball said we should get two pints, which would be four of the half pint jars, which is what I'm using. I got not quite three. This is the, the third one. So I don't know. They're always off a little bit. So if you want to use this recipe and make sure you have plenty, I would count on two, maybe three, if you're really cooking it to the gel stage, if you want to make sure that it is going to absolutely gel, um, cooking it to the 220 degrees. I don't think you're going to get two pints out of that recipe. Just saying. Um, anyway, so I have my two little jars in my canner. We're gonna go ahead and put the lid on our canner. Crank up the heat, bring it up to temperature. If you're a water bath can and you wanna make sure that your water covers your jars by at least an inch, you wanna bring it to a full rolling boil and then start your processing time. If you are using a steam canner like I'm using, you have a dial gauge on the top of your canner that tells you when to start timing. We are going to process for 15 minutes. Once you reach a full rolling boil or the appropriate spot on your dial gauge, you wanna adjust your heat just to maintain for the 15 minutes of processing time. You don't want your canner boiling too vigorously throughout the process. So we're going to process for 15 minutes and then I'll bring you back. Okay guys, we are all done. I processed for 15 minutes like I told you and then I let my jar sit in the canner for about five minutes and then I took them out. So I got my two measly little half pint jars and then I had this much leftover of a third one. It's still warm, but I did want to show you the texture of it. Once it fully sets, it's going to be perfect for slicing like you guys like. Um, it's beautiful texture, beautiful color, and it tastes amazing. I highly encourage you to give the Grand Marnier a try. Even if you don't like alcohol, it is, you can get tiny bottles of it to use in your holiday baking. It just adds so much extra flavor. It's just a little bit of something in the background that just makes it taste really special. So I also like the little bit of orange juice that I used. Um, that just gives it a little extra flavor. Makes it more complex than just the uh, cranberry flavor on its own. Okay, now to serve this, what you're gonna do is just take your jar, run it under warm water for a couple of seconds to loosen it, warm it a bit to loosen it, and then it should slide right out for you. You can use a plastic butter knife to go around the inside of the jar to help loosen it if you need to do that. Uh, make sure whatever utensil you use, it is plastic. Um, anything that's metal could chip the glass inside of your jar. So we don't recommend using metal. Use something plastic to just go, a plastic spatula, just go around the inside of the jar and then it should slide right out for you and then you can slice it up. Um, I will leave a link for you, like I said, to the recipe from the National Center of Home Food Preservation to do the recipe um, that completely strains it. I think they use a little bit different amounts of water and sugar to their cranberries. Um, I think this one would be fine to run through the strainer also, but um, I will leave the link to that in case you want to completely strain it. But I think once this completely cools and sets up that it will be the perfect texture for slicing. So um, there's that. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them for me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day, you guys.